you get it? Um, everybody smiling? No. Uh oh. You got to be real with it. You got to redeem yourself after that, right? Yeah, that's a moment. <laughs> David, I love you, man. Love you too. Hey, man. You know, it's amazing what a little one mm. can do with the biggest one. You're exactly right, <laughs> <laughs> Do you hear that? Yeah. Hey, Tracy. Oh, oh God. God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know. First of all, how are y'all doing tonight? Doing good. All right. Yeah. Yes, I am uh, to be before you tonight and to uh, be able to stay here safe. That's right, brother. Free. Amen, brother. Uh, in, this is the weirdest thing, right? And it's hard because I've been trying to explain it to people in the camp. And I've been trying to explain it to people for years. But, uh, I haven't been in prison in about 10 years. And uh, when you try to tell people in prison that you're not in prison, <laughs> they look at you like you're crazy. And uh, today in prison, for some people, was a uh, up and down day, pretty hard day. Because uh, they come in from work and different things, and they was urine house and people and shaking people down and doing all kinds of things, but some things that I understand to be uh, somebody rolling the ladder or, or something of that nature. And the man asked me, he said, Man, you don't care? No, I don't. Because I'm not in prison. That's right. I'm free. That's right, brother. So if they uh, won't. Analysis. They want to shake me down. They want to do anything they want to do. So be it. Amen, brother. Because I'm free. That's right. From the pressure. Yeah. Of this confinement. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, brought some things to my mind. I told Scott in the car, he asked me, he said, bro, where are you going to come from the world? I said, I have no idea. I say, uh, I read over a few things, and God has showed me a few things. And I say, Scott, it's weird because I think this is the first time that he hasn't just said wrong. Use this by the scriptures or go to this book and come from here. Mm -hmm. And I said, so I really don't know. I've been in a couple of different books, and we talked about uh couple of books that he was reading in, that I was reading in, and I said, well, Lord, uh, we need to do something, because I don't know what to do. And Scott said, well, bro, now I'm ready to go. If you ain't ready, I'm ready. And when he said that, I said to myself, Whew. okay. So I've been sitting back there with George and them, and they talking about singing that song, and I'm saying, okay, Lord. You need to tell me something, because if you don't, I'm going to and tell Scott, I ain't ready. I'm scared to death, because I don't know what I'm going to do. Like, it's about like singing that song a minute ago. Just, hey, hey, you need to guide me right here. And uh, when I got up here and started singing that song, that was uncomfortable for me. Amen. That was really uncomfortable. And uh, it was uncomfortable for Joe. <laughs> but it wasn't uncomfortable for David. That's right. Brother. Free. 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 That's right. See, we so bound up in who we are right. and what we are. Man, I'm wrong, man. I ain't gonna get up there and <laughs> look all crazy. And, and David said, come on, man. <laughs> I'm yeah. saying, man, I'm a pretty tough dude, man. <laughs> But right now, David, you're a lot more tough than I am. <laughs> I've been there, brother. And, and I know all y'all. And y'all know I can't 
can't sing, so it really ain't that bad. But David, I don't want to go up here. <laughs> I'm about to cry. <laughs> David, I don't want to go. I'm in there, bro. I'm in right where you at. <laughs> and he looked at me and saw the phone, and he was like, Yeah, it's going down. <laughs> and just that freedom yeah. in David, man. Yeah. Just that freedom right there, man. Just was so beautiful to me. Yeah. Because, you know, now I understand why God didn't give me nothing. Because he knew it was already here. He knew it. He knew it was already here. And you know, as grown men and women, we put so much pressure on ourselves to dot every eye and to cross every T that we miss the liberty that we have in Christ. We miss the free gift of grace and mercy that God has given to us. And uh, I don't know where I'm going with this easily. He's leaving. Because like I told you in the car, I had nothing. I, I've been reading and I've been studying. I, I even, Monday night, I got on my knees and I said, Lord, give me something to give your people. And I read stuff and it didn't sit in my heart. So we got up there to sing that song. And the freedom that David had. Yeah. And you know, I think that's what sets me and the soul out to God apart from people that's just sitting on the people. Wow. Because David was a great king. David was a great warrior. But he was free to be vulnerable. He was free to call out to God when he needed help. He was free to say to his friend, I'm that man. That's right. Abraham. Listen. Moses. Free. free. The Damascus Road saw a very intelligent Pharisee got set free. That's right, got set free to become Paul and to write about our Savior and how to be free. Amen. How to be free. And it's so amazing that I didn't even realize how free I was to some years back. And again today, because I walked into the sergeant office and they said, Wingles, we need a new analysis. And some years back, when they were asking me, oh Lord, what am I going to do? <laughs> what? What? Ooh, I need some more. <laughs> oh, my kidney's about to bust. Oh. <laughs> Daddy, okay. Where you need that? Amen. I ain't got no problem giving it to you. Amen. Freedom. And I'm watching some guys that stand in the house and they looking at me with that look like, you just gonna go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna go, man. Well, uh, I'm gonna drink some water. <laughs> Free. Freedom, man. Christ died on the cross of Calvary. So a wretched, no good, trifling sinner could be free. Thank you, Lord. And we don't have the respect to live free. Amen. Scripture says that. What type of man, when he was freed from the yoke of bondage, will put the 
shackle back around his neck. I freed you. And you will put yourself back in prison to see I came, died, resurrected Amen. to free you. And you put yourself back in prison. Amen. 60 days from now, I walk out of prison. Wednesday. Amen. Thursday, I'm going to go back to the game and say, hey, 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 y'all let me back in. <laughs> y'all let me back in. I want to be back in prison. I mean, let's rationally think about this. Right. Every time we make the choice to sin. Every time we make the choice to turn our back on Christ, we walk back to the gate and ask to go back to prison. You right? I don't want to go back. This freedom that uh, Christ has afforded me that I was blessed to have right. in prison, a physical prison. So you mean to tell me that the blood of Christ is good enough to not only free you from spiritual prison, but also from physical prison? Go ahead, brother. I have uh, some men that I think a lot of that I've met through the course of my incarceration. And one in particular, an older gentleman named James Woods. And I never understood why, you know Mr. John, <laughs> why he could just walk through prison and not bother him. And as a young Christian, I'm getting caught up every day. I'm getting caught up in something else. And he told me, he said, Ron, the things that you put in your heart are the things that you chase out. So therefore, if you're putting the wrong things in, they gonna keep you in prison. If you put God in, He'll free you. Amen. And as I walk this walk, and God has been bringing me along, I've got freedom and freedom and freedom and freedom Amen. to where. I didn't understand the scripture uh, years ago because as a young Christian I thought that there was just some things that we had to deal with in this flesh. And I was taught that by some people uh, in Bible studies and different things. And uh, before I go into this scripture, Father God, I know I've said a lot before I came to you in prayer, Father, but I've only said what you poured on my heart. And now that you lead me into your scriptures to read verses, Father, anoint me with your Holy Spirit that everything, everything that they see in here is of you. Remove me, but use me for your will. Yes, In the name of your Son, Jesus, amen. Oh, work for let him that think he stand take heed lest he fall. There has no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. But God is 
faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. But will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. 1 Corinthians 10, 13, 12, and 13. Oh, uh, I thought that I was subject to temptation. I thought that this was just something that I would have to deal with the rest of my life as a Christian. And as God has brought me along, I came to understand that in that freedom is where we're able to deal with these temptations. We're able to deal with the things that come at us every day. We'll deal, we're able to deal with the ups and downs of life because God has promised that in everything that comes your way, that I'm with you, I'll sustain you, and I'll see you through. And it's so amazing because I don't think sometimes that we really get it that submitting ourselves to God, surrendering to God is the most powerful thing that we can do. Because in that, you become free enough to be able to deal with life. See, it's hard for me. I'm going to speak for me because I know I don't mean not deal with these things. But when I'm happy, when I'm at peace, I can deal with situations. If the roof came in and I'm at peace and I'm happy, okay, listen, we need to get a loud, get the roof 